Kom in, kommando. Il! Il! The Battle of Drabuk Sound, as featured in The King's Choice from 2016, a Norwegian film focusing on Norway's leadership in the days before and immediately after the German invasion of the country. It's less an action film and more a biographical, but does highlight an extraordinary and often overlooked event of World War II, the sinking of the Blücher in the Oslo Fjord. It's easily the best cinematic scene of the whole film and also true to history. So them! The Battle of Drabok Sound and the sinking of the Blücher was a historically short one-day event taking place April 9, 1940. This day was significant. It marked the invasion of Denmark and Norway and the beginning of World War II on the Western Front and an end to the phony war, the phony war having existed between France, Germany and Great Britain for the previous eight months with all powers hesitant to escalate hostilities towards one another after the invasion of Poland. At the outbreak of World War II, Norway found itself stuck between the superpowers of Germany and Great Britain, each pressuring the nation to side with one or the other. The Scandinavian countries had significant natural resources, particularly iron ore vital to war industry. Much of this ore was shipped from Norwegian ports. Though it would be Germany who invaded Norway, the British had plans to invade the nation as well, not just to deny resources, but also to open a front that would divert German forces away from France. Believing a conflict over Norway was inevitable, the British began to mine Norwegian waters, which would have prevented iron ore reaching Germany and hampered a German invasion. However, this was delayed by political interference, which was to be catastrophic for the British, as the laying of mines only began April 8th, one day before the German invasion. The operation was incomplete and ineffective. Yeah, that's my step. Utenriksminister Kotringte. Han ba meg meddele dem at fremmede krigsskip er på vei inn i utredel av Oslofjorden. Immediately before the April 9th invasion, the political situation in Norway was chaotic, as the Norwegian government was actively protesting the sudden mining of its territorial waters by British warships. As a German flotilla, led by the cruiser Blücher, headed up the Oslo Fjord as part of the German invasion of Norway, instructions had not been received throughout the Norwegian military, confirming they were indeed at war. The Blücher steamed through the Oslo Fjord, accompanied by heavy cruiser Lutzow, light cruiser Emden, and 13 smaller craft. It was largely expected they would take the fortifications by surprise, and that the Norwegian military would not engage them. However, they would be taken on by the aging coastal forts guarding Oslo, at first unsuccessfully by two smaller Allen forts with 15 centimeter guns, but eventually by the Oskarborg fortress, equipped with 28 centimeter guns and torpedo batteries. The Blücher was a HIPAA-class heavy cruiser, a conventional design, but outfitted to be state-of-the-art. She was heavily armored, displaced 16,000 tons. She mounted eight 8 8-inch guns and 12 4.1-inch guns. She was the best in her class the world over. The flotilla arrived in the Oslo Fjord close to midnight. They were darkened to aid and surprise. Despite their overconfidence, the Norwegian government would not resist the coming occupation. Though being fired on by the initial small fortresses guarding the fjord, they pressed on confidently that the Oskarborg fortress would offer equally insignificant resistance. Commanding the Oskarborg fortress was Bidger Eriksson, a 64-year-old colonel thoughtful and willing to make independent decisions. He commanded 450 men, mostly new conscripts, not trained on the use of coastal batteries. He divided his trained men accordingly. The fortress is not fully prepared for war, 
but given the increased focus on Norway, a mine barrier had been planned, but wasn't to be laid for a few more days. Ericsson, when witnessing the Blücher attempt to press its way towards Oslo and past the fort, identified the ship as hostile, given its darkened state, though he could not confirm its nationality. His command to fire would become famous, stating, Either I will be decorated, or I will be court-martialed. Fire. In. Two shells were fired from the 28cm, 11-inch Krupp guns Moses and Aaron, engaging the Blucher at over a thousand meters. The guns were firing 255 kilogram high explosive shells. Further proving the boldness of Ericsson, he rejected the idea of firing a warning shot, a violation of pre-war Norwegian rules of engagement. Though Ericsson later explained his decision, noting that the engagement from the initial coastal fortresses at the entrance to the fjord some hours earlier was sufficient enough. Both shots hit the Blucher, one penetrating the side of the ship, exploding inside a magazine containing oil, incendiary bombs and other munitions. The high explosive rounds caused significant fires on the Blucher. Fortunately for the fortress, as the guns were run largely by untrained crew, and reloading would take significant time. However, the lighter coastal batteries took their turn firing on the Blucher, as she was ablaze but continued to sail past the fortress and attempt to control the fires. Despite the intense crippling of the Blucher, which included her steering, she managed to sail past the fortress. However, she was now identified as German and moving slowly in her crippled state. She would pass the torpedo battery, commanded by Andreas Andersen. Andersen was assigned to temporarily command the battery, as the regular commander at the time was sick. Andersen, however, had served at the torpedo battery in 1909 and was familiar with the aged weapons system. He had originally retired in 1927. When the Blucher slid past the torpedo battery, at a range of only 500 meters, Anderson knew just where to place his 40-year-old Whitehead torpedoes, weapons of the no longer existent Austro-Hungarian Empire. Anderson scored two for two hits, with the second proving to be the killing blow against the Blucher. The battery was reloaded and readied for the following ships. At 6.22 a.m., the Blucher sank into the depths of the Oslo Fjord. Loss of life was estimated as high as 1,000. Well before the Blucher sank, the remaining German naval force retreated, fearing mines unaware of the torpedo battery. The Blucher was carrying many of the troops and Gestapo agents needed to occupy Oslo and seize its government, king, and gold. Its sinking delayed the German occupation to the point where it allowed King Hakon and his government to escape to help bolster the coming Norwegian resistance of the German-occupied nation. The Norwegian government was able to continue the defense of Norway until it had evacuated to exile in the United Kingdom on June 7th, the Norwegian army laying down their arms on June 10th, 1940. All right, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this brief on an interesting and often overlooked battle of World War II. I think this is one of the many great underdog stories of the war. As always, feel free to share any insight on the topic or stories of your own in the comments section, and we'll see you next time.